So last week I did a brief video on BioWare and Mass Effect Andromeda in response to a video by Top Hats and Champagne, who I will refrain from addressing further due to my usual irreverent style and my desire not to hurt his little feelings any further. Seriously, what kind of beta faggotry is this? You make videos like this. Speak for yourself, compadre. Not everyone is a dirty colonial peasant. Ah. You have the nose of a pig. And you are so fat that time slowed down when I watched your video. But a tiny tongue-in-cheek pinch has your balls tuck up and you screaming, I'm not going to respond to you, even though I never asked you to in the first place. But first, I'm going to respond to tell you exactly why I'm not going to respond. <laughs> Sorry, just had to get that out for a minute, because that was some funny SJW level shit. But never mind me, I'm just a grumpy old snob who lives in his mother's basement. I'm done with him now. Anyways, at the end of the video, I mentioned that there were many other reasons to hate EA and Bioware and reject them, as well as Mass Effect Andromeda, than the ones that he made up. So, having some time and wanting to do more gaming stuff, I thought that I would bring up a few and provide some real, so good reasons for why EA and Bioware should never be touched with a 10-foot pole unless you're looking to cram it up one of their nether regions. That being said, let's do this shit. Reason number one. It's EA. I think really nothing else here needs to be said, but just for shits and giggles, and in case you're one of the few people who's been gaming on another planet in a distant part of the universe, I'll explain. As I mentioned before in my Social Justice Bites video, EA has repeatedly been voted in as the worst company in America. Admittedly, this isn't necessarily deserved, as there are companies that are worse than EA, like maybe one or two, but there are none quite as hated as EA by its own consumer base. To give you an idea as a primer, EA once humored the idea of charging its consumers $1 each to replenish clips in first-person shooter games. At the top and most erect of their dick list is their habit of buying out studios and gutting them, taking studios that once made some of the best games in gaming history, and then forcing those studios to churn out new installments in those franchises that are poorly made, dumbed down, weighted, weighted with useless features, or just overall of shitty general quality with no thought as to the legacy of the franchises that they are effectively destroying. Not surprisingly, Mass Effect and Bioware was also a victim of this. EA acquired Bioware and Mass Effect between the second and third game and replaced the head writer. This, as well as a rumor about a leaked script, caused them to completely rewrite the plot of the third game so that it made less sense with all of the foreshadowing in two and decaying the motives of the main villains to something more akin to a Saturday morning cartoon motivation. As well as forcing the game to include unneeded multiplayer elements, which took time away from the general game design that could have been spent adding actual content and well, we could do a whole video on how they fucked up Mass Effect. Then there's EA's answer to Steam, the Origin Store. Upon installing Origin on your computer, it scans your system and files, and even recognizes games that you have purchased from Steam, and adds them to your Origin account. And up until about four years or so ago, this was not even something that, that they listed in their terms of service for potential customers to read and give their permission on. They just did it without telling anyone. There's EA's practices of deleting accounts that go unused after a period of time, which also deletes everything purchased on those accounts. The online pass controversy, early server closes, day one DLC, fake Christian protests to draw up attention for their products, etc, etc, etc. Basically, but scummy and ethically dubious, you can bet that EA has done it. And if they haven't done it, it's on their to-do list. Number 2. Manvir Air I'm sure you knew this one was coming, so let's get it out of the way now. Really, you could mention all of the social justice feminist garbage that has been coming out of Bioware over the last two years. And I will. But this guy deserves special mentioning. Manvir is one of the lead designers of Mass Effect Andromeda, and he has a long history of voicing his very strong personal opinions on Twitter. As for what those opinions are, well, I'll let him speak for himself. Colloquially, Manvir has come to be known online as Curry Thunder, in addition to his more casual nickname, that racist fucker at Bioware. Which is saying a lot when you consider the fact that Bioware is a cesspit of SJWs already. So it really tells you what a special case Manvir has to be to deserve singular notice. 
His Twitter feed is long composed of tirades against whites and repeated hate messages and implications of calls for violence, often calling white people honky magoo and other racial epithets. And this isn't just him jumping on the SJW bandwagon. This is a long-standing pattern of behavior going back to tweets from 2011. More recently, and more famously, Van Veer railed at EOS developers for a set of concept art produced for Dusak Mankind Divided, which he felt was problematic as they were appropriating Black Lives Matter ho Matters whole shtick. Except, you know, being less racist, divisive, dickish, hate-mongering, and thuggish, and also having more of a point to its existence. Manvir joined in with the assault of SJW lunatics who screamed at the studio in their frustration saying, Many game studios don't have enough diversity, but when you outright fuck up by appropriating Black Lives Matter, you deserve to get called out. Also, let's pretend for a minute there was a ton of diversity on that Deuce X team. It doesn't mean they understand the issues well enough. Diversity on its own is not the solution, it's a first step. Actually being woke enough to understand inclusion issues still must occur. Needless to say, there are many non-whites on the EOS development team, including the lead designers who came up with the idea in the first place. Recently, a petition has been floating around the internet calling for everyone to mass boycott Mass Effect Andromeda and calling for him to be fired from the company due to his blatant racism. And I can certainly see where they're coming from, though to be honest, I don't really agree with it. Look, this guy is quite obviously a piece of absolute human filth, a bottom feeder and scum sucker of the highest order who in any sane world would be inhabiting a padded room. That being said, I think it's wrong to specifically call for him to be fired from his job because of his opinions. I think the displeasure of his existence and his attachment to the product project should certainly be voiced to Bioware, though I can't see them caring, but it should be left up to Bioware how to handle their, pro their own problem. If they want him to stick around and deal with the backlash, that's their business, and not a good, very good business decision. Well, again, I would not call him to be fired for his opinions, or expect him to be. I would expect him to, him to be fired, because I cannot fathom how this man even functions at his job without turning it into an especially hellish work environment. Not to mention that this will inevitably seep, seep into his work in general, and fuck that up just as bad. His Twitter bio proudly proclaims that he fights for intersectionality in the video games industry, which is pretty much his code for me first and me always, and is deliberately trying to force his political agenda. As I said, their choice though, I wouldn't push, though I do fully support the boycott idea. I definitely think we should boycott Mass Effect Andromeda. Do that shit. Let me know what you think in the comments about whether or not people should be calling for him to be fired, but regardless, he alone is a good enough reason to avoid Bioware and everything attached to it like the plague. Number 3. The social justice infestation in general. So I touched on this with Manvir, but SJWism is a rampant problem throughout Bioware itself, as anyone who played Dragon Age Inquisition will be able to understand and attest to. The inclusion of the trans character Krem and the obnoxious way he was preached to the audience annoyed many. Having trans characters clumsily and forced down one's throat tends to be a turnoff for most people for some strange reason, especially since it's done via pointless retcon. With Krem's addition and the character of Iron Bull, the Kanari somehow go from raging murderous fundamentalist with a more rigid case system than the boner Alex Jones got on election night, to a tolerant and accepting society that's totally cool with people stepping outside of their various roles. Despite that, other Kunari in the series have been shown to adhere to their roles in society so strictly that death is the only moral option for them if forced to abandon them. Which was what made the Kunari such interesting characters. Their moral system was completely alien to most people in its rigid strictness, unflexibility, and their willingness to relinquish any form of freedom or personal desire. At least if we would consider it freedom. But, you know, interesting and unique cultures, fuck that! We have narratives to push, bitches, back in the salt mines. And let's not get started on characters like Ceres, who is basically Tumblr in 3D rendered form. Then we have them taking on others like Sam Meggs, who used to write for the Mary Sue, and if that didn't make you throw up just a little bit in your mouth, then, well, just watch this. Online, they can take your character, lock them in place, have made their character pantsless, and then can simulate sexual assault with your character, and you are helpless to stop it. 
The graphics are so good, this attack is eerily realistic, but this is virtual rape. Hackers rewriting codes and hijack Grand Theft Auto. The vile scenes are then posted to YouTube. That's deplorable and should not be allowed anywhere. Like, Yeah, you might remember Sam Meigs from a few years ago for her screaming about rape mods in GTA, which were totally a thing and totally something women had to deal with because women in video games don't actually control their own characters. In video games, women are taken over and just stand there doing nothing, while the shadowy patriarchal players actually control her actions through little microtransmitters, which is why she also can't turn the game off if something happens that she doesn't like. The patriarchy will not allow it because they have to get their rape quotas met for the week. Fuck these people. Bioware's own forum became such a cancerous mess that the company actually shut it down to prevent dissenting voices from being heard in the ether, and most of its senior staff and anyone who has had any attachment to its series and franchises left the studio within two years after being taken over by EA, leaving just a bunch of newly installed pretenders walking around in the robes and accoutrements of the great kings who came before them. It's sad to see that this is what has become of the company that gave me some of my favorite RPG games like Knights of the Old Republic and Mass Effect. Well, some of the Mass Effects, obviously, and Dragon Age 2. And the last one that we're going to look at is... Number 4, Mass Effect 3, specifically the ending. Mass Effect 3, at least the end, the last part of it, was such a magnificent pile of shit that it can't be fully explained in the time taken for this video. It was not only bad, but it was a complete betrayal of the series up until that point. So much so that Bioware has, has had to set this new Mass Effect game in an entirely new galaxy because the galaxy of the main series is more or less unusable for any future stories without massive retcons to the game's endings. There are dozens upon dozens of videos and articles that you can find online and forum after forum all describing exactly why the endings were so dreadful, so I won't go into too much detail into the specifics, but what this means in the overall sense. The Mass Effect 3 ending was the start of what would continue on with the Dragon Age Inquisition, namely the absolute incompetence of the writing staff that remained at Bioware after all of the talented people had fled from EA's takeover. Mass Effect 3 had issues with bugs and some gameplay annoyances as well, also that useless multiplayer BS, but those were all technical issues, and technical issues can always be fixed. But you cannot just patch a, game, a game's narrative and story. While the social justice agenda had thankfully not yet invaded Bioware by that point, the writing team was no longer able to write up to snuff. Part of this, as I mentioned before, is due to EA switching out writers between 2 and 3, and another part of this is harsh deadlines from EA forcing the team to create the game in a hurry, as they are wont to do with all their titles. These two factors are probably what accounts for a great many of the plot holes, as well as the total change in the story and focus, but a greater problem was that the ending was written entirely by only two of the writers on staff, Casey Hudson and Mark Waters, who both wrote the ending separately without any input or peer review from the rest of the team. And it shows. The ending of Mass Effect 3 is something that simply should not have been done by any competent writer. It broke every rule of the contractual narrative, was nonsensical in the, in the extreme, and didn't even try to give a satisfying conclusion. It's because of this that Andromeda has to be set in an entirely different galaxy that hasn't been fucked over, which raises the, qu which raises the question of why and how this will even be a Mass Effect game in the first place. You may as well just call it the start of a new series, if not for the fact that they're relying on nostalgia and fan appeal to squeeze what they can out of this game, which everyone knows is going to be a shit show. Anyways, there are four very legitimate reasons to condemn EA, Bioware, and the new Mass Effect game. I don't know, I really wish these companies would quit screwing up the games I love, especially EA. They're almost as much of a cancer on the industry as SJWs are. Anyways, that's enough for me today. Feel free to like and, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next week.